Good morning to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. I'm up in New Jersey. You can see I'm not in my office, hotel room here. On my way up to Long Island, where tomorrow I will be giving a talk at an emergency management conference. And then Thursday, I'll be going into New York City. I'm going to spend the entire day there at Fox Weather. Looking forward to that. If you've got the Fox Weather app or however you watch it, uh, I'll be on several times throughout the day. So really going to be an exciting couple of days as we are in the hurricane season, talking about hurricanes, learning about hurricanes, teaching, you name it. And, of course, that brings me to today's discussion. It is the East Pacific's turn. It looks like the Atlantic starting to kind of go back into where it should be, climatologically speaking, after a very quick start with Arlene, Brett, and then Cindy. Now we're going to take a look at the Eastern Pacific. We'll also look at the Atlantic, but nothing out there that I'm too concerned with right now. And there it is. There's Cindy, or the leftovers of it. 10% chance of development again over the next 48 hours, 30% over the next week. This is what the development area looks like. Might bring some rain showers to Bermuda so you can get some fresh water from it potentially. We'll look at it in more detail on the satellite picture or the uh, set of pictures and animation in just a minute. Meanwhile, in the eastern Pacific, Invest Area 91E, East Pacific, so it's tagged technically as EP when they're in the Atlantic. We call them like 93L, but they're really AL93, but whatever. So <laughs> 91E, we'll call it. And um, this one doesn't have an invest number just yet, I don't believe. Both of these, though, should go on to develop off the coast of Mexico and um, could bring some squalls to parts of southern Mexico on the periphery, especially of this one. But I think this one's going to be smaller in its size. Interesting how different tropical cyclones, they're not all the same. So we'll take a look and see as we progress how these things are going to sort of shake out. First of all, though, there is the remnants of Cindy, kind of a big mess out there in the southwest central Atlantic, well north of the Antilles there. Not really doing much upper level winds, not very conducive. And it's just, a like, a, like I said, a big mess there. Not really expected to do much, but down to the south, look at that, that vigorous tropical wave that represents moisture and energy. And that is going to move on through the islands here, may even bring some needed rainfall to our friends in parts of the Northeast Caribbean. Our colleague Brent was texting me a little while ago that, hey, maybe that tropical wave could bring us some action, and by action, some showers and storms and that much, much needed fresh water. Meanwhile, off the coast of Africa, more tropical wave activity coming off, a little bit of dust, not real prevalent. We're not seeing those huge plumes. You remember in years past, even by this time in June, we would get these terms like um, Godzilla dust storm or whatever and just craziness, right, with huge plumes of dust coming off Africa. Yes, there are some dust plumes with the Saharan air layer right now, but nothing that's got the sort of social media sensation attached to it, nothing like that. It's very normal, maybe even still below normal in terms of the extent, the thickness, and just the overall concentration of African dust. And as such, the eastern Atlantic, the tropical Atlantic, the northeast Atlantic should stay very warm relative to average. Meanwhile, in the eastern Pacific, this is an infrared shot because the sun has not completely come up over here enough to give us good visible or true color imagery. But here's Invest Area 91, E or EP for eastern Pacific. This is our next system that's going to try to develop and uh, both of these should become named storms. That's what it looks like in the overall guidance. Notice, too, just for eh, a related subject, not much in the, uh, in the way of a monsoon reflection just yet in the areas of Mexico that typically see it, nor in the southwest United States. That might change in about two weeks. We'll have to wait and see. I'm very interested in the southwest monsoon for a lot of reasons, and we'll talk about that later it is monsoon season. That typically starts around June 15th on the calendar. We'll see what Mother Nature does, but you just notice the lack of thunderstorm activity, diurnal convection as we call it. Nope, not seeing it just yet in the mountains. And uh, they're very uh, vegetated down there, very heavily forested, and that evapotranspiration helps to lead to some of the moisture for the southwest monsoon, just not active yet. 
All right, so that tropical wave that is uh, going to bring hopefully some rain showers to uh, a good chunk of the eastern Caribbean and the northeast Caribbean, maybe maybe even Puerto Rico. There's the moisture plume associated with it and the total precipitable water product here from the University of Wisconsin site and that whole area, um, all those dark oranges and reds, yep, that's high precipitable water headed towards hopefully Brent's neck of the woods right through here, St. Thomas, St. John, and maybe even Puerto Rico. It's already affecting these areas down here, the Lesser Antilles uh, as a whole. You know, with a few uh, passing squalls. Some of those could be thunderstorms, so just be careful and mindful of that, especially if you're out on the water. Lightning is a dangerous side effect of getting some beneficial rain, right? You can really see the intertropical convergence zone through here. You can also see that the Saharan air layer overall and just the stronger nature to the high pressure out here. We're not in a favorable pattern. The um, convectively coupled Kelvin wave that came through and gave us Brett and Cindy that has since moved on and we don't have anything out there to sort of supercharge everything in this part of the tropics anytime soon, which is the way it should be. Meanwhile, there are the remnants of Cindy and uh, that'll, yeah, we'll continue to watch it, but I just don't think much is going to come of it and the computer modeling is not very enthusiastic about it either. I'll show you that here. Let's outline it in black. This is the area that we want to watch there. I mean, come on, the vorticity signature on the GFS is feeble not much there at all there's a little bit of that energy with that tropical wave and you can even see why do they call it a tropical wave look at the wind barbs here's your easterly winds and then they just kind of turn like this see this little bit of a turning right there as i outline those wind barbs there's your wave axis roughly that's the tropical wave it's a wave a little kink in the easterlies there a little wind shift some extra moisture some energy and the stronger ones, of course, go on to become potentially tropical cyclones. This one moves through the Caribbean, Eastern Caribbean, like I said, maybe with some rain, much needed rain, but nothing serious, right? And then Cindy or whatever, just not much happens with it. We're out now beyond five days. And as you can see, the Atlantic generally pretty tranquil. However, another tropical wave coming off Africa, once we do get back into a pattern, of more favorable forcing, as we call it, and low-level westerlies that come through. Again, maybe another convectively coupled Kelvin wave. They're invisible generally. You see them basically once they have their effects, uh, but once that happens, maybe later on, uh, once we get into July, this area might get active again, but nothing in the near term. Meanwhile, in the Pacific, 91, and then this, I guess, would be 92E, <clears throat> if it does go on to develop further, which it should. And looking at the modeling here, I'll just kind of frame through it. Both of these systems ramp up there. The westernmost system, uh, 91E, would become the first named storm, presumably. And then that other one's pretty small. It's kind of close to Mexico. So again, you folks here in southern Mexico, just pay attention because some of those outer bands could bring some locally heavy rain that kind of thing. And if you got vacation plans down there, you know people that live there. Yes, it can be rather nasty as that passes through, but no direct hits, nothing to be concerned about. Just aware that a tropical system might be trying to develop. And then look, they kind of rotate around each other. A very interesting scenario. And don't forget, like I pointed out yesterday, water temperatures, once you get up here, will drop off considerably because of just the way we are in the uh, pattern with what we call this negative Pacific meridional mode or the negative PDO Pacific Decadal Oscillation bottom line. What does that mean? It means the water off of western North America there from California south and west almost to the equator, we've shown it lots of times, is running below normal. Nevertheless, this area right out here, pretty much the only fertile area in the eastern Pacific right now, uh, you don't get development down near the equator, of course, because of the Coriolis effect not being there. I talked about that yesterday as well. Um, so this is really the only area we're going to be watching over the next several weeks to months unless we get a dramatic change in that negative PDO for the eastern Pacific. So a couple name storms probably coming up. Nothing too consequential yet, of course. We will stay on top of it and keep you abreast of what's happening out there. All right. I will have an update tomorrow. I'll be up in Stony Brook 
Uh, the talk, the presentation is at 2.30 at Stony Brook, um, I guess it's a university or whatever, and I'm looking forward to that, maybe 80 to 100 first responders, emergency managers, and then they have a bigger conference that starts on the 29th and goes on into the 30th. Um, very honored to have been invited to be a presenter. I'm going to talk about storm surge because that, of course, and water as a whole, rain and storm surge, in my opinion, those are our biggest enemies when it comes to hurricanes and tropical storms, even depressions. I mean, right? Depressions usually 35 mile an hour wind, but you can get 20 inches of rain. So I'm going to talk about the impacts of water over wind, and uh, that's going to be the big thrust of my talk tomorrow. All right? That is it for me, from, from me. <laughs> Hopefully it's not it for me. That is it from me for today. Let's get this online for you guys. As always, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. I'm Mark Sutter with Hurricane Track. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.